What's up, Gamecock fans? Another video coming from the Rooster Man. Uh, getting closer to the season, about seven Saturdays away before college football gets here. I uh, wanted to start doing some uh, spotlight videos on uh, different position groups at South Carolina. Um, some of the groups that's been questioned, of course, is our offensive line and how they'll be in the wide receiver room. Um, some of the Gamecock community was a little upset that we didn't have bigger guys uh, to come in through the transfer portal. Uh, there were by size and height. So I want to do a little spotlight video on uh, our wide receiver group. Uh, I got a couple of different things I want to bring up here. Let's see. Uh, we'll bring a few things up on screen. Well, one thing I do want to do is we'll go through the roster and look at all the wide receivers um, that are here at South Carolina uh, and, and talk about each guy a little bit. Uh, the roster does give uh, – a bio on each wide receiver so we'll look at those guys so we'll bring that back up in just a few minutes um but i wanted to bring up something else because this was this was kind of in conversation um uh, about nick harbour everyone's interested in nick harbour uh so there's there's a uh a youtube channel called uh, uh college wideouts that I'm subscribed to, and they put together, it's a it's a short little two minute, um, go over and subscribe to those guys anyway. I don't own this video, they do. Um, hopefully they don't hit me with a copyright, but I kind of wanted to shit, they put together a little bit of highlight. And one thing I had hit on before was, uh, you know, let me see if I can get this up a little bit bigger for you guys. Here we go. Um, it, somebody had brought up about his drops and, and he just didn't perform how they thought he would perform at wide receiver. Uh, so I brought this highlight up to kind of show some people. If you look quite a bit of the passes that were thrown to Nick last year, were a little bit behind him or like he had to fight to get the ball. So it really wasn't taking advantage of his speed. Now everybody knows you see right there, Nick Harbor, six, five, uh, 240-plus. Um, he had 12 receptions, 195 yards, and only one touchdown. So I'm going to play this offense. Oh, continues to move on the Gertrude quarterback. Sellers, yeah. back shoulder throw, end zone, on yeah, the see, money, touchdown. That's that Nick Harbert. Walk-on yeah. thing to try uh, to be a early contributor. Boy, has he been. Yeah, the down the field, one-on-one -on -one ball. Powerful back. Now they don't have to get going. Uh, here's another Rattler on the roll. Good ball and caught by Harper, that big receiver that everybody's talking about. He doesn't need to Throws to Harper. Harper can't. See, did he make the catch? Uh, His help, he can do he did end up catching that one. On third and nine, oh, Rattler complete. Yeah. And he it's went it's right it's back to Harbor, and Harbor finds a uh, but a six five guy with his team, man. Rattler and rolls out, out looking downfield, uh, finds his guy again. Harbor is still on his feet and picks up another first down. Now we're sitting here 21 seconds. Yeah. So Rattler down the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Get back to what they did in the first and quarter. That's that pass is going to be complete to so Nick Harper, year. but his knee touched. Uh, and I know it's a lot of that. We love talking to him. On second and seven, little receiver screen. Nothing happening that time for Nick Harbor. But you need to get. I don't know if he's going to use that 10 point two. Little receiver screen. This is Harbor. Get those long strides going. I tell you what, I want some video of him for the rest of this game. I have to be. Harbor caught it and on the move. First down. On top of him. Well, that. And then that Clemson he's rivalry that game guy, coming so up on got, Thursday. Rattler go. back to work. Behind. And he's got a good I'm ball there. that's complete oh, Nick to Nick Harbour, the true freshman with his oh, first oh, pitch. What is that now they're trying to grind out another Rattler. Oh, 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 on a dime. 
Now, we love those catches. Any catch that the kid makes is great, but does that really uh, do us any good for his skill set and what he can bring to the table? Um, we'll come, let's get this roster back up real quick. Um, and we'll go through the roster a little bit on the wide receivers. Um, all right, here we go. And this is going to be the complete roster, but we're not going to talk about every guy. We're just going to select our uh, our wide receivers out of this. So we'll go back up. And of course, this is in number order. So we're going to talk about Amari Huggins Bruce that came in. You know, if anybody want to find this information, you just go on the South Carolina Gamecock website and go to their roster. And it'll tell you about the kids. We know Huggins Bruce was a guy that uh, was at Louisville, originally from South Carolina. And then I'll give you a little bio, bio about him. It'll give you, you know, what he did, skill set, electrifying, uh, 80 career receptions, 1,121 yards, 10 touchdowns in 38 games, uh, started nine games, averaged 14 yards per catch. Uh, he's got two 100-yard uh, receiving games, and then we'll break down his junior year. Um, to, but like I said, the wide receiver was kind of, you know, everybody looked and everybody were bringing in. Uh, 5'10", 5'11", a shorter, more, uh, people like to call them slot receivers. Uh, I think you still get, you can get some of the smaller guys out on the uh, outside. I don't think they all have to be smaller guys, but there's Huggins Bruce. We want to spotlight him. That's his numbers right there. Uh, he played in all 13 games uh, as a junior, 20 receptions, 312 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, 15.6 yards per reception. Uh, added six carries, another 48 yards and a touchdown. Um, but like I said, we I wanted to go through this because there's just been a lot of questions. And, and like I said, South Carolina's wide receiver core. Sorry about my computer loading up kind of slow. Y'all know how internet is. And there's some storms in the area where I'm at. So, it makes it a little slower. Isaiah Bennett, a true freshman, wide receiver this year coming in, also from the state of South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina. 5'11", 185 pounds. I think uh, a lot of people talked about him coming out of the spring game and how much he's learned um, at the pace that he's learned it uh, for a true freshman. I think there's a lot of expectations for him to play a lot this year. Uh, probably going to see him in the games a lot. The way I gathered everything that I've heard, everything's been talked about with him. Um, I, I have a feeling he's going to be a big part of our offense. Um, I'm going to go through this roster in each position group. We'll come back through and go through our tight ends, our running backs. You see a lot of these guys in there. Um, Gage Larbonane, another wide receiver, came in through the transfer portal. Uh, from Louisiana, the Larva name wouldn't be given. Transferred in from Miami of Ohio. Um, kind of get some little highlights there. Uh, last year, junior season, played in 10 games. Uh, for the Red Hawks, 42 passes, 679 yards, six touchdowns, every 16 yards per catch. So, yeah, he rushed five times, 59 yards, uh, at five points, 55 yards. Um so, yeah, that's what everybody's kind of talking about, just the size of the kids and, the, you know, because uh, it seemed at one point we couldn't get any height, and they weren't height. The only tall guy we were having there at that one time, of course, was Nick Harbor. Um, and everybody loves Nick, 6'5", 235. Uh, they touted, moved to wide receiver because he wanted to keep some weight off for the Olympics. Now, I don't know if Nick's – that's still the plan, To if he's still trying to stay thin, he still has his track and field career. I don't think he's going to bulk up and do anything else. But, uh, you know, just looking at the uh, looking at the uh, highlights I just showed you guys, I, I just think with Sellers, with Harbor, 
we got to use this kid for what he is, right? He's six foot five. He's fast as hell. You got to get him out there uh, on some goal routes and throw the ball up and let him go up and make those 50 50 catches. Uh, and, and use other guys around him, right? Create space for him. Let him get out there and uh, do what he needs to do to use his size. All right, come on over here. Let's get back. Let's get back over here. Being slow on me. Um, another guy we'll talk about too. A lot of people have not talked about that is in our wide receiver room now is Luke Doty. He will be going to SEC Media Days. Um, was a quarterback. Actually, in high school, he was a, a wide receiver. Then he went to quarterback, was a four-star kid coming out of college from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He's six one. I mean, kind of a uh, – I think they use him in more of a possession-type role from what I saw last year. Uh, they have they don't send him down the field real deep, but he's – I think he's had pretty good hands. I mean, he, he wasn't bad as a wide receiver last year. He's just not what most people think of when you think of wide receiver. Um, but he's a good blocker. He, he catches the ball well. I mean, for for converting over to a different position, I think he played really well. I mean, when he has the ball in his hand, he can uh, break tackles, and he's a good runner. Uh, let's see right here. He's got... 13 passes, 123 yards, and a touchdown uh, in it receiving. So I I think he, he'll be a good possession receiver for South Carolina this year. Not, he doesn't get talked about in the receiver room as much as just because I think he's a converted wide uh, quarterback. So people aren't really talking about him as much. Uh, there's some of our other quarterbacks there. Eric Rice, he's a young kid. Uh, no, Richard Jr. I got him mixed up with another guy. Um, six foot one. So he's another another guy with some size to him. Six one, two oh two. I think they're expecting him to uh, be a little better this year. Uh, Peyton Mangrum, another kid. We've heard some stuff about uh, Jared Brown, uh, the transfer from uh, Coastal. Uh, from originally from Georgia. Um, we'll look at his stats from last year at Coastal. Uh, his career played in 27 contests over the past three years with 20 starts. Caught 108 passes for 1,534 yards and 11 touchdowns. Uh, also rushed 35 times for 139 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, playing from Coastal Carolina. I think some guys really think he's going to be good this year at South Carolina. 5'11". That's like I said, a lot of these wide receivers, people were concerned of because of their height. Now, they did go out here and get Del Vaughn Campbell from Nevada. 6'4". Uh, uh, 205. So they did bring in another guy with some size to him. 6'4 is a big, tall guy. Uh, played pretty decent out there at Nevada. You'd have to say, let's see Immediate impact has appeared in 47 games at Division One with 17 starts created. Credited with 76 receptions, 1,159 yards, and an average of 15.3 yards per catch with three touchdowns. I don't think Nevada's where he started. Uh, I kind of did a little deep dive in him. He, he, he was, uh, there you go. He was in the Big Ten playing for Illinois. Noise and transferred out to Nevada now in South Carolina. Uh, but South Carolina did want to add some more size. Like I said, this kid is 6'4, 205. I think he'll help tremendously, probably like they said, immediate impact player. Uh, him and Harbor, both big guys, fast guys. LeBron Gatling, true freshman. I think everyone has high, high hopes for him too. Um, but we can't use all these wide receivers at one time, right? So I think like Gatling and some of these guys, they're going to try to hang on to them um, so they can redshirt them. We've got to have a feature somehow. Now, Ventrevious Jacobs, I looked at some of his highlights too. He's a transfer from Florida State. Didn't see a lot of action last year with six foot, 195, but the action he did see, he was productive, right? Uh, 
caught three passes for 60 yards and one touchdown as a freshman. Let's see what it says here. Made his college debut, caught 13 yard touchdown on his first collegiate reception. Boy, that's the way to start. 66 13 win versus Southern Miss. Um, so just going to give some of his catches right there. Uh, if you look at his highlight reel, it's very elusive. Uh, elusive with the ball in his hand. Uh, he creates a little bit of space, too, because he's got some quickness and some wiggle. He gets his hips turned real quick. Uh, so I, I expect him to, to see a lot of snaps at South Carolina this year, too. Um, we'll go on down some more, check out the rest of see what Tyshawn Russell. Of course, we saw him last year. He was the one on the north who that, threw that really long pass to um, Tyson went through some struggles a little bit last year with hanging on to the football. I mean, as far as he had some drops, uh, he's going to have to get much, much better uh, hanging on to the football. Uh, DJ Braswell will be running back. Blake and Buster. But, you know, just kind of wanted to put some highlights on some of the wide receivers that we have uh, here at South Carolina. Uh, like I said, that's one of the rooms I think people have concerns on. We need to see how they're going to step up and play. And, of course, the biggest name in the room is Nick Harbour, and everyone wants to know how he's going to do. Um, like I said, I showed you the highlights, that little clip where them guys put together. I think the biggest thing for Nick, Nick Harbour, man, is you got to get the ball out where he can get to it and uh, run after the catch. He's a bigger guy. It takes him a, a, a couple steps to get going. So if he's having to stop, catch the ball, and then try to go, uh, the best option there is to got to try to truck somebody, right? He's got to get run over him to get away from him. And if you're back shouldering him with the DBs already hanging on his back when he catches the ball, that's yeah, you're asking him to drag the kid down the field. Uh, and that's it's the SEC, dude. You ain't dragging too many of these kids nowhere. They all know how to play defense. They're all pooched. Um, Aaron Morton, kind of another uh, redshirt junior kid, hadn't seen much action at South Carolina. Elijah Caldwell, uh, redshirt freshman. Uh, expect big things out of him. We'll see how much playing time he gets this year. Uh, uh, Amazon Little John, another freshman. He's a six footer. All these guys are six feet. I mean, I don't think anyone's. Uh, you got, you know, CJ Adams right here, another guy. It, I think people don't think about these guys because they're not the biggest names that you're used to hearing coming out. They don't have the most experience. You see, they're all like freshman, rich or freshman. They have good size. Uh, CJ Adams, they're 6'2, 215. Uh, and we do have some size in our tight end room, too. I'm not going to bring all that up right now, but you see our tight ends, Brady Hunt, 6'5", Reed McKeska, 6'5". Um, so it, it's Nick Elkness there, another 6'6", six, six tight end. Uh, there's some size in our tight end room. So you, know, you, you, you use some tight ends out. Some of these guys are good blockers, too. And you need that, right? Uh, get some blocks in and then just kind of let them slide out and go. I mean, if we want to talk about the tight end real quick, of course, we saw Brady right back there transferred in. Then we didn't know whether he was staying. So uh, he go to Texas A&M. And then I don't know if he got bad information uh, or when Jimbo got let go. Uh, was back at South Carolina. It's kind of a little weird ordeal that happened there. I don't know the whole story behind it, but um, Josh Simon, I think, is probably our most uh, athletic tight end. Um, you'll see him flex out a lot. They used him quite a bit last year. I think he's going to be a really, really integral part of what we do this year. Uh, 6'4", 259. He's in your Senior Kentucky. He's actually originally from Crestwood High School, which is Dallas Hills, South Carolina. Everybody was excited about him because he got to come back home and he transferred. Uh, played 52 games. 
30 starts. So, I mean, he's caught 86 passes, 1146 yards, 16 touchdowns at Western Kentucky. Uh, last year, appeared in all 12 games. Well, that was his junior season right there. No, that was for us. That's right. At red shirt. Finished third on the squad receptions, 28 while ranked at fourth with 256 receiving yards. Uh, it had two touchdowns. But he'll be our primary tight end this year. I think everybody knows that. Uh, like I said, probably the most athletic of the tight end room and more uh, not quite the traditional tight end you think of. It's more the Kyle Pitts slash wide receiver type tight end. Uh, we saw him like slide out and get the slot when he was in the game quite a bit last year. And then you got, like I said, the Brady Hunts and the McKeskas and those guys that are more your traditional uh, type tight ends, the bigger guys that can block and get out and uh, catch some passes for you. But anyway, I just want to do a kind of a little bit of a short spotlight on the uh, South Carolina Gamecock wide receiver room and where we are, what we have on our uh, roster, uh, what's the expectations for this year. I think they're going to be better than a lot of people are giving them credit for. Uh, Shane Beamer talked about going down at, to Miami, and he spent some time down there with the Dolphins and, uh, you know, with Tyreek Hill, a little bit sh smaller wide receiver core down at Miami. Uh, looking at some things, probably learning some things, uh, how they run their offense with those guys and getting them in space and letting them catch the ball and have the ability to run after the catch. But that's my video for today. Hopefully everyone's enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And tonight at 8 o'clock, I'll be doing a live show. Uh, SEC Media Day is coming up. If you, could, uh, if you could talk to any coach, uh, or have a question for any coach, which coach would you pick and what would your questions be? Uh, don't forget to come in. Bring your question, bring your, pick your coach, pick your question. Hey, this ain't like media days where you have to limit yourself on what question you're going to ask. You can ask them anything, you know. So you guys come check that out tonight. Uh, appreciate everybody for supporting the channel. Uh, going to get out of here, get this video uploaded, and we'll see y'all at 8 p.m. Peace.